firearms dealers to make sure they understand their obligations to comply with the federal laws and keep guns out of the wrong hands. And of course, this announcement builds on the work the President and the administration did over the course of 2021, which represented more action on gun violence prevention via executive authority than any President in, his, in a first year in office in history. With that, Darlene, why don't you kick us off? Thanks, Jen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Team. Um, I just wanted to start off with uh, getting an update on the 500 million uh, at-home test kits that you all are supposed to be sending out at some point this month. Um, has a con can you say if the contract has been signed yet? And if not, when do you expect that to be signed? And also the website, what is the status of getting that up and Sure. Let me give you an update of where we are in the process. So uh, as Jeff Zion said last week, the Department of Defense and HHS are already executing on an accelerating, uh, accelerated contracting timeline. Uh, this is the largest, of course, over-the-counter uh, purchase of tests to date. Uh, and the RFP, the request for proposal that has been sent out to industry, allows us to best understand logistics, timing, and manufacturing considerations. So where we are now uh, is that the RFP has been closed as of today, and we are currently evaluating the responses to it, which means we are finalizing the contracts. Uh, uh, while I expect we can share additional details with all of you soon, and certainly we hope to do that, uh, we're on track to start seeing movement on some of the awards through the RFP uh, this week. Uh, so the first deliver, delivery from manufacturers will start later this month. That's our expectation. When we have those deliveries in hand, uh, we will put the website up, make it available, uh, so that people can order tests at that point in time. And then secondly, um, do you have uh, anything to share on what the president's message will be on Thursday when he goes to the Hill for the anniversary sure. of 160? Absolutely. Um, I can give you um, some highlights at this point in time, and obviously the president is still working through and reviewing uh, his own remarks. Uh, but uh, on the afternoon, um, what you can expect, I should say, uh, is that the president will speak to the historical significance of January 6th and what it means for the country one year later. Uh, as a reminder, on the afternoon of January 6th, the president called what was happening at the Capitol then an unprecedented assault on our democracy and an attempt to subvert our Constitution and interfere with the peaceful transfer of power. So on Thursday, the president is going to speak to the truth of what happened, not the lies that some have spread since, and the peril it has posed to the rule of law and our system of democratic Governments, governance. He will also uh, uh, mark that day, uh, commemorate the heroes of January 6th, especially the brave men and women of law enforcement who fought to uphold the Constitution and protect the Capitol and the lives of the people who were there. Because of their efforts, our democracy withstood an attack from a mob, and the will of the more than 150 million people who voted in the presidential election was ultimately registered by Congress. And he will also speak to the work we still need to do to secure and strengthen our democracy and our institutions, to reject the hatred and lies we saw on January 6th, and to unite our country. Uh, and obviously, we'll have more to preview as we get closer to the speech. Just one more. Sure. Uh, since the president didn't take questions from us either today or yesterday, can you tell us whether he, um, whether he can live with a smaller Build Back Better package or a package that doesn't have the child tax credit in it, or? with only employed people qualifying qualifying for the child tax credit, which is what Senator Manchin says he wants. Well, I can tell you that the President absolutely wants to get Build Back Better done, is committed to get it done, because it will lower costs for Americans across the country, child care, elder care, health care, uh, a lot of the uh, areas that are impacting American families' budgets across the country. Uh, I can tell you that uh, that's, those are conversations he and many members of our senior team will continue to have with a range of senators who are involved in this process in the weeks ahead, uh, and that we're not going to outline them in more detail from here. And I would also just reiterate that the President uh, sees uh, and recognizes and values uh, the contribution of the child tax credit and what it did to help uh, reduce, uh, lower uh, uh, the, prevent 40 percent of kids from being uh, from being in poverty last year, uh, and it's something that he advocated for, he introduced, and he called for himself. Uh, so he absolutely wants to see an extension of the child tax credit. I would note, this doesn't answer your question, but I thought this was an interesting thing someone shared with me this morning, that the way it was designed is that payments are going out one every month for six months. Uh, as soon as people file their taxes, they will get the other half. So we absolutely want it to be extended. We're going to fight for that. But there is also additional payment that will come to people who are eligible uh, when they file their taxes. 
Go ahead. Hey, Jen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, and since the president didn't take questions from us, we weren't able to clarify. He, he said to the, un, to the vaccinated and boosted, quote, you can still get COVID, but it's very unlikely you'll be seriously ill, roughly what he said. Have we reached a point in the pandemic now where he's basically saying to Americans, accept the fact you may get the virus, but if you're vaccinated, it won't be that bad? What he's saying to Americans is, uh, we know there are going to be breakthrough cases. Uh, we've had them at the White House. Uh, we, are, we are seeing them across the country and certainly elevated race, rates of cases in certain communities across the country, including in Washington, D.C. But the step that's most important that people can take to prevent uh, reduce the, the potential for hospitalization and death is to get vaccinated, get boosted. Uh, he's not telling anyone to accept anything. He's just conveying to people what they can do to protect themselves. Uh, he's also said very clearly, and I think he's illustrated that in this and what he said publicly, as have our doctors, that we're going to be direct and straightforward with the American people. We know cases are going up. Uh, but we also know that if people are uh, boosted, it is going to significantly reduce their potential to be hospitalized and certainly prevent uh, to, to die. Uh, and that is what we're conveying to the public. Okay, so let's, let's be straight here for a second. Cases are rising across the country. Tests are hard to come by in many places, or there's long lines for them. Schools are closing again or having to go virtual. And that's not just because of the weather in some parts of the country, but because of the pandemic. Uh, there is a sense among many that the country has lost control of the virus. Would the White House agree with that? We would not. And here's why. We're in a very different place than we were a year ago, Ed. 200 million people are vaccinated. Those are people who are protected, seriously protected, from illness and death from the virus. Uh, we have also just purchased the largest over-the-counter purchase of tests in history, 500 million tests. That builds on the fact that we have uh, already distributed uh, 50 million tests back in December to rural health centers, to community health centers. The fact that we have 20,000 sites across the country where you can get free tests. The fact that next week people can uh, get reimbursed for their tests. And we are going to continue to build on that. It also, on schools, I would say 97% of schools are open across the country. And the president wants school to be open. That's why months ago, even when people questioned his advocacy for this funding. He advocated for $130 million in the American Rescue Plan and $10 billion to cover testing, even when many people said that was not necessary and was not needed. That has all been distributed to states. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people people.